Hello friends, in today's tutorial, we will be making this loose watercolor streetscapes. We will be doing a loose uh, ink drawing, pen drawing and we will be doing coloring on top of it. Hi friends, I am Vanidas Mangathil and let us learn watercolors together. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe and press the bell notification so that you get notified whenever I release new videos. Without further ado, let us begin the video. I am using a cold pressed watercolor paper 300 GSM and drawing using a waterproof pen. Uh, the pen that I am using is Unipin Fine Line 0 0.7. Okay. The drawing is pretty, I mean, loose and uh, it, it is okay if you are making some minor mistakes. I mean, overall, uh, it should be convincing. That is the idea. Okay. So maybe a couple of vehicles. Okay, and uh, yeah, a couple of vehicles, and maybe a few, few figures, and then we will, uh, as a context, we will make some sort of buildings, uh, so that it will overall look like a kind of a streetscape. So you should be knowing how to make, uh, draw, how to draw cars and figures uh, from imagination without reference. Uh, if 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 you want, I mean, if you are not, uh, I mean, if you don't have confidence, you can take reference and then you can draw using references. Okay, so I'm slightly speeding it up so that uh, uh, we we don't take too much of time. But uh, the idea is still clear. I am just making it 1.5 times faster. Okay, right now since we have done the cars and uh, the figures, let us make some buildings as in the background all right maybe some taller taller structures okay. the i am just worrying about the overall sort of perspective that's it i mean i'm not worrying about the details of the building the overall perspective should be a kind of convincing that's it maybe some interesting uh, kind of a structure in the background. I'm sort of making it from memory. I have uh, made this painting earlier. So I, I just am sort of uh, trying to recollect the structures from memory and then to do it. All right. Now this looks, overall it looks okay. Uh, maybe a couple of uh, couple of uh, parked two wheelers here, motorcycles, bikes, etc. Yeah, I think that is it for the dry. And let us take some uh, watercolors. So I am using Aquatone watercolors today. Uh, I am using uh, uh, some pale wash of uh, cerulean blue. Okay, and. These are various uh, kind of blues, primarily cerulean blue, and maybe occasionally I would use some sort of a reddish color. See, the precise color name varies from brand to brand, but uh, I'll try to uh, mention the, the, the main color that I'm using. Okay, so, uh, this much is good enough for the sky, and let us also use similar color to start with for the for the road for the ground so on top of this sky color i am also using some brown color burnt sienna or burnt amber uh, so that it looks little warmer that's it i'm using a small mop brush for this okay i think i think this much is enough as i told the video is uh, fast forward by 1.5 times, okay. Some kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it as, sir? A lavender color plus neutral tint I am adding to get some sort of a bluish or cool gray kind of a color, okay, for this building. 
So the building is treated as a silhouette and it is not treated with details. All the buildings uh, that we are going to paint uh, will be just sort of uh, treated as a background. We won't do too much of details there. And uh, the purpose of that is to just create the context for the vehicles and the figures. Okay. I have also added some warm colors, the front facing plate of the building and the left side building. And on the right side, probably I will use some sort of a yellow color, warm color. So the right side buildings. Okay. I think the left side building is reasonably good. Maybe we will define some reflection. Okay. Very similar kind of a color that we have used for the building. I am using it for the reflection. It looks too dark now, but I am expecting that once it dries, it will be lighter. Because watercolor dries light. So here, primarily I am using uh, yellow ochre and some, some amount of red. Sorry, some part of the color picking is not captured in the camera. But... It is yellow ochre and uh, some amount of red. Okay, because this part of the building, I assume that some light is being hit on the building, so there is some light. And there are some kind of uh, details, some awnings or something but, uh, around the buildings. Uh, and it is suggested by red color. See the buildings, for the buildings I have used a pale wash, but for these uh, red details I am using slightly thicker kind of a pigment. And now I am using the same lavender and neutral tint sort of a color for the bottom portion of the buildings. See the buildings, top area of the buildings are usually getting a lot of light and it could be treated as, uh, uh, treated with the lighter tones, but the at the ground level of the building, okay, it is mostly, it will have a lot of uh, darkness, a lot of shadows, okay. So I'm using some darker tones for the bottom of the buildings. It also serves as the purpose to clearly separate the cars and figures uh, from the background. Okay, let us also define some sort of uh, reflection for these things on the right side. Again, it is very suggestive way of doing it, so you don't have to really worry about precision here. It is some sort of a reflection of the right side objects, and there should be some reflection for the background buildings, the less taller buildings also. Uh, I think we have uh, roughly got the shape of the reflection, shape of the buildings, and we have, uh, I mean, defined the cars and figures with some contrast. I'm splashing some lavender and white color uh, for the uh, for the uh, lower part of the building just to create some sense of uh, I mean to sort of diffuse the details of the the ground level area of the building. Okay. With those splatters of colors you will feel that there are some sort of details there, but whereas you are not specifically defining the details. This is kind of a turquoise kind of a color. Okay. And adding some t neutral tint to that to make it darker. And as, a, as I told you, these are just sort of suggestions. Okay. Please don't take it as precise words. These are some suggestions. Uh, to kind of suggest the details of the, I mean, the building. If you if you really see a building, there will be lots of lots and lots of details. So we don't want to do all those things. And this could be a little bit of an inter interesting part. So I am dealing this area with a little bit of care. So I'm using a small uh, synthetic round brush for this kind of architectural details. And as it comes down, uh, we can somehow, I mean, smoothly merge it or merge it to the buildings. Maybe some darker areas within the structure. Okay, I think that's it. Right. 
Now let us make some brownish color and sort of suggest some details for the building using dry brushworks. When I say dry brushworks, I am using, uh, I am not loading the brush with a lot of paint and the paint is slightly thick. It is not very watery and very quickly making some brushworks using the side of the brush. Okay. These are sort of some shadows of the building I mean details, architectural details and it kind of defines or adds some kind of interest uh, for the buildings, okay. And this has to be, this can be done very minimally or you don't have to really be precise here. Just uh, these kind of dry brushworks gives good amount of suggestions for the details on the buildings like the windows, the doors and other architectural details. Okay, and while doing this, you have to be a little careful about the perspectives. So the overall perspective of this dry brushworks uh, should be correct. So it should match with the overall perspective. You cannot just make dry brushworks without considering the perspective uh, part of it. So we, we had to be worried about the perspective and if you are not confident with the perspective, please do study the perspective of uh, boxes and rectangular shapes, I mean cubicle shapes and you can practice it, okay, you can do a lot of sketching and naturally the, your perspective will improve. Same thing for the left side building and here I am using little darker color because the building itself is darker so let us make some, some more darker tones for the, for these suggestions, okay. Right, again, okay. I mean consider the overall perspective while making these windows and other details. I think that much is sufficient for the, so I think couple of seconds of videos, uh, video I have lost uh, for the details of the left side building, but that is okay, I think. And the front glass of the cars and maybe we need to give some color to the car, I'm not sure what color I should give, maybe some yellow. I find it, I mean, sometimes challenging to decide the color of the vehicles, color of the dress of the figures. Uh, yeah, then I just follow my instinct and take whatever color uh, that comes into my mind. And when you make the figures, the wheels and the shadow areas of under the, I mean, around the wheels, the shadow that is cast on the road, all those things are very important. For the darker thing, I am mainly using neutral tint uh, color. If you are finding some value in this tutorial, please do subscribe and press the bell notification. And uh, uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please do write them into the comment box below. I will be more than happy to respond as early as possible. Okay, so I think the cars and vehicles are coming reasonably okay. I mean, it is not perfect. I, I'm just giving some suggestions, okay. It is not perfect. We are doing a simplified representation of the cars and vehicles and the figures. And if you, if you are not confident of uh, painting figures, there are a lot of videos on my channel about uh, drawing figures from various forms, using boxes, etc. So please go through them and you may find it informative. I'm applying some clean water below the car so that I can add some reflection. Okay. And similarly, on, below this car also I'm making some clean water wash. And then I'll be kind of, I mean, suggesting a reflection there, okay. Using with the similar color as that of the car. And since it is, this area is wet, so it will kind of uh, spread and it will 
create some illusion of the reflection. That is the overall idea. Uh, here I am using a, a synthetic round brush, a Skoda brand. And some reflection for this two wheeler, the scooter also. I think we are uh, mostly done with the main objects, the reflections, etc. And what is left is uh, uh, some details. So let us do the that the headlamps of the cars. Okay, and the headlamps also will have some reflection. I am using Chinese white watercolors directly from the tube. And the brand of colors I used here is Camel. For the rest, uh, rest of the painting earlier that I have used uh, Aquatone watercolors, which again is an Indian brand. Okay, and for the for the white, I have used Camel. The figures don't have too much of contrast there because they are kind of in the darker area, the shadow area. And we will later give some sort of highlight using uh, some opaque color, white white color, so that uh, some of these elements will get a little bit more attraction or contrast. Some some neutral tint and burnt sienna to suggest this uh, part two wheelers. Again, this is very very uh, I mean simplified suggestion, not too much of details. Okay. I'm using a little bit of uh, white without adding any water. It's a Chinese white a watercolor from Camel brand. And this will give some kind of interest. Okay, I'm adding some orange color now directly from the tube. I'm using the orange color for the face and exposed body part of the figures. Okay. Right, I think that is good enough now and I'm, I, I feel it convenient to smudge with my fingers at, uh, at some point so please don't uh, hesitate of course you you may have to thoroughly wash your hands later because uh, your hand will have a lot of uh, uh, pigments accumulated on, on it okay and some kind of highlight This is uh, some blue, cerulean blue and white mixed. And let us do some reflection for this part, the vehicle also, two wheelers. Same approach, wetting it and then adding some darker colors. I think we are getting the feel of uh, those reflections and uh, the overall, uh, the elements are coming out, I mean, convincing now. And... Uh, yeah, I am pretty much happy with however it is turning out. Yeah. Some some refining touches with highlighting white. You have to be careful while doing this. You don't overdo this. It is very easy to overdo this and we should be careful. Maybe some directional line to suggest some depth. Okay, and it gives the perspective for the road also. And maybe some sort of uh, traffic lamp. Some these are some fine details to make it more interesting. Okay. This again should be done with care, and dry brush works works good for these kind of details. Right. What else? I'm not finding anything more to add. Probably we can we can 
treat it as done and we can sign it. Okay. So I have signed it and I'm just looking for any final touches, maybe some some final touches for the car. And any anything that is if you think any anything that we have left out, any essential things, maybe you can give the touches. Usually I don't make any touches after signing it. But today I'm tempted to do that. But you should be careful of doing this. I mean it is very easy to overdo the painting with lots and lots of details. Okay. So refrain from doing all these final details. I mean, beyond a point. Yeah, I think I think I should stop now. Okay. So I uh, hope uh, this is uh, this was informative. And after removing the tape, we get some crispy, fine edge. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this was informative and useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do write them into the comment box below. I'll be happy to get back with my response as early as possible. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, if you are new to my channel, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and press the bell notification. I'll be releasing more and more videos going forward. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.